Shout out all Urban Central. Yeah, this put on future hitters. Love to my whole time, Atlanta. Got gotcha. you. Curtis, what's good, man? You and your feelings about Daphne? Is she with gang them? Or is it that you sucking little rod? <laughs> However it go, I want you to fade. Fuck all that. Since it's entertainment, let me beat the shit out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? Curtis! What's up, everybody? Another great workout today. Staying in shape, staying inspired. Inspiring myself. You know what I'm saying? First thing you gotta do is inspire yourself without inspiration within, from within. You know what I'm saying? That self love, self respect, and all that. Stevie J and 50 Cent have joined forces, and their collaboration is set to reveal something astonishing. Prepare yourself, this is the calm before the storm. Me looking at this lawsuit, he also alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a video of Stevie J having sex with a man. Who, little Stevie? Huh? <laughs> Who, Stevie? <laughs> what Jocelyn used to call him, Stevie? <laughs> Yo, I read that, man. Um, I don't know if you know this, but then maybe they have a tape that we don't, we could, we didn't see because the pictures was a little vague. There was an exotic worker came out and said that was him and not Stevie J. But in order for them to put that in there, they must have clearly thought it was Stevie J or think it's Stevie J. But you got to get this art. Check this out. He knew that this kid admired Stevie J and loved the work Stevie J had done in the industry in the past. This kid looked up to Stevie J. Now, what if Puff told him that that was Stevie J in the tape? And the kid, the guy looked like Stevie J. He did facial, uh, they, his face, he did facial, his face was fixed like he was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making. You understand? So now, the kid could have been drunk, kid could have been high. He was like, yo, Puff could have been like, yo, you talking about, this is somebody you admire. Look what he doing. This Stevie J right here. Now, in that kid's mind, he may have thought that was Stevie J or he think that's Stevie J. If Puff told him that was Stevie J, it was Stevie J. So people can't say, oh, he lying and everything like that because we really don't know what was said, but the kid said he told him, this is somebody I admire. This is somebody you got high aspirations for that you that, that you want to be like. Look and see what he doing. This is what you should be doing too. Wow, that was crazy. And you knew Stevie J, right? I knew Stevie, Stevie J real well, bro. I knew Stevie J when he was with Bad Boy, one of the hit men. When, he, when him and Puff fell out, I used to uh, take Stevie J around and everything, bodyguard him in certain places and everything. Stevie J was one of those dudes. He was a good brother, but he always wanted to be seen. And when you hear these allegations, right, you know Stevie J, do you think it's possible that he could be gay? Well, I don't, I don't know his sexuality, but cocaine is a hell of a drug. You understand? And by cocaine being a hell of a drug... A revelation is on the horizon, one that will send shockwaves through the industry. Stevie J and 50 Cent are poised to unveil something that no one could have anticipated. This is more than a mere disclosure, it's a seismic shift. And he indulging with Diddy like that? And now he's invited to the Diddy parties. In that in that whole thing, if you read it, he said that Diddy said he was having sexual relationship with Stevie J. So all I can say is this, man. If two men lay down, how many homos get up? Two. <laughs> in my book. <laughs> That's all you can say, man. You don't know. You know, unless you catch them in an act like that. You understand what I'm saying? But if he said, Puff said that he laid down with Stevie J and two men lay down, two homos get up. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a quote, man. And if I'm not mistaken, Stevie J, he was with you the night Big got killed, right? Yeah, Stevie J was there. Stevie J was there. And as soon as Big died, 
he was supposed to get on a plane with us, with them, and go to New York. He rushed to Faith Hotel. <laughs> rushed just to the hotel. He was wearing my cross and my chain, right? I said, Stevie, I'm not selling you my cross. My cross got blessed. He said, let me wear it. I said, yo, okay, bro. Uh, he gave me 1500 for the chain and then never paid me for the cross. Ended up giving Faith the cross and the chain to give to little Chris Wallace. That's what he said he did with it. You think it's a chance he was cracking Faith back then? I don't know what he was doing, bro. But it's funny they end up now. It's funny he ran to uh, Big's wife when uh, he got murdered. Just when the story seems straightforward, it's about to veer off course. Stevie J is ready to disclose a secret that will change everything. And with 50 Cent's involvement, the narrative is about to take an unexpected turn. We're going to see, man. We're going to see what they got. But speaking of the raid, right, did you see that viral video of Diddy he was seen in Miami with Stevie J after the raid? You seen that video? Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. What you think about that? Well, I go way back when Stevie J first came to Bad Boy after they left Uptown Records and everything like that. And Stevie J and Puff fell out real bad over, you know, uh, it could have been producer credits and the whole nine yards, but Stevie J didn't F with him until Love and Hip Hop. When Stevie J went to Love and Hip Hop and he became famous from that, Puff called him over there and they had a meeting and I guess they rekindled their friendship because I used to bodyguard Stevie J and you know, uh, go to different clubs, you know, I got pictures and everything. Stevie J didn't, uh, he didn't mess with Puff, you know, until after that love and hip hop thing went down, you know. So now they back cool. What got me about the stuff like that, that them being back cool, that Stevie J went on TMZ and was speaking up on behalf of them. Now, if anybody I want speaking up behalf of me, or I had anybody speaking up on, on my behalf, it wouldn't be Stevie J. You understand? I don't think that uh, an individual of his caliber is capable or can be trusted in a way that I would like for him based on his actions on television and who he is as a person, what he has been shown as a individual is a type of individual that I would have speaking on my behalf. Come on, we know he's a drug abuser. We know that he's been seen putting his hands on women in the wrong way. And I don't know, this, this, that shit is crumbling, man. You know what I'm saying? But you, 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 you know, you can always say this, man. And in in the infamous words of one of the world's greatest comedians, Richard Pryor, cocaine is a hell of a drug. Why you say that? Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Cause LaRob said that they be doing the liquid cocaine in the in the bottles, in the Ciroc bottles. An admission is looming, one that will leave everyone in disbelief. Stevie J is on the brink of revealing something deeply personal, and it's going to alter perceptions in a way that no one could have predicted. Stevie J been in countless rehabs back and forth. We know we've heard of Puff being in rehabs, secretly going to rehabs too. So, my man, when you get on those type of psychotropical, uh, I think it's psychotropical drugs, man, and you start believing your own bullshit. And them two individuals together, man, man. You know, you know they gotta be crazy. Something gotta be wrong with when, when he sit up there and he said that he wanna challenge 50. He and, and, and I don't know much about that clout shit. 
him challenging 50 to a fight. And we seen how 50 sit. We seen how Stevie J fight on love and hip hop and all that other bullshit. Him scrappy, him, uh, this other cat. My man, there's no way. There's no way. He, he, he don't want it with 50, bro. That, that's, if that ain't cocaine, the Pope ain't Catholic. So you feel like 50 Cent would give Stevie J that word? It wouldn't even be a job. 50 Cent would whoop, 50 Cent will whoop niggas like Stevie J on the way to a real fight. You seen 50 fight before? I ain't never seen 50 fight. I seen some tapes of him get down on that end, but I never seen him fight in person. But I know the demeanor of a man. I was with 50 Cent on a couple of occasions, and one occasion, it was just me and 50, and about probably six other dudes that didn't want to get out the car because he was ready to get down. And you could see it in him. You could see he got it in him like that. I'm looking at him. I wrote this shit about, my, about this shit in my book. 50 ain't back, he don't back down, bro. And you could see when when you know a dude is about it, about it, and got it in him, you can see it in his eye. You can see it in the way he, he, he carry himself. You see how he threw his, his old man in the bushes, Tony Ayo, they got takes on 50 getting down boxing. I've seen, I've seen takes on him. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen him in person, you know, as far as fighting. I've been with him in person, but he got it in him, bro. But yeah, yeah, that caught me by surprise because I always knew that Stevie J, he did production for Bad Boy, but I never knew him and D was that close until, you know, as of late, you know, since the raid, so. Yo, they was close. They, yo, bro, Stevie, Stevie J and Puff was like pots and pans back in the day. I don't know what happened between them, but something happened on the producing credit side that Stevie J stopped effing with him. And you know, Stevie wasn't dealing with him at all. He was just doing more stuff for, uh, for Jodeci than he was bad boy. Tensions are mounting and the situation is set to escalate. Stevie J and 50 Cent are about to bring hidden truths to light sparking a chain reaction that will captivate and shock audiences alike. Everyone, how are you doing? Um, I am just bringing it to your attention that it is now July the, the 6th. And uh, I gave you two days for a grace period just because I had to get my shit together. I was having a good time, but five mics. There's an app check for you or a paycheck for me. Thank you. Right now. <laughs> Let's see where you at right now. A thousand. A thousand by July 4th. Thousand. Okay. Man. It's the 6th. It is. It's my birthday. It is. Y'all here enjoying ourselves with my family. But it's Saturday. Mm -hmm. Sunday means you want to stay away from Monday. Man, you ain't got but. If we want the fucking money, come Monday, Bob. Or else. Get the money. Then. We want it once. We want it once. Sir. Not 90 in the stack, though. Make sure they give you the whole no, money. No. <laughs> and I'm going to spend your money right now. I'm going to spend, I'm going to borrow a thousand dollars from 50. Can you give me a thousand dollars? Give me a thousand dollars. They give me a thousand dollars. And guess what? You get your money when I get mine. That's right. So now you owe me a thousand dollars after I give me a thousand dollars. And I'm going to need mine by Monday. Yo. Tell you about what happened last night, right? So Snoop come backstage and, and, and about the age, right? So he come, they smoking the weed and shit. <laughs> Yo, this nigga just smoking some shit, bro. Like, that, that shit was not even regular weed, I promise you. The shit was crazy. Like, I'm like, I'm high as a motherfucker and I ain't even smoking this shit, right? So, I'm like, he said, he said, Yo, when we do anything, I, I pop out. I'm like, all right, cool. We do something, you know what I'm saying? Then, Motor came in, he saw the money. When the money came, that nigga eyes went up like. I should've known right there not to fuck with that nigga, right? Not to go on stage, but then I let him come on stage. After he come on stage, he told him, yo, you, you gotta give me something. 
you gotta give me some money. Huh? What you talking about? Why you ain't get that from the promoter, niggas? You, you gotta charge these niggas more. Fuck that, man. This is not me, man. This is them, man. They owe you the money, man. Let me help you get Say something on the mic, though. Listen, hold up. Stop the music. Hold up, 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 He just wanted you to see his Instagram. Man. All right, so how much I want for this one? Attack, 145. 145? Yeah, it's all iced out. That's a, a big, big boy. Yeah, it's a big boy. 5980. I like this one. I ain't gonna hold you. But you know what? All right, look, huh? You can hold this 40 right here. Why don't hold it? That's that, yeah, Who's that's- that from? That's from the road Timmy, right there. That's the, he gave oh, me a hundred. he coughed so. it up. That's yeah. he coughed yeah. it up. That 40. But look at the- when they find out how much money I'm getting for this motherfucking chain, well, ooh, look at this. You see how I be doing these niggas? Oh my Those are god. Two carats each. Oh my goodness. What's that? All the carrots. All the carrots. 150 carrots. 150 carrots. Yo, Timmy got to send another wire. Snoop, everybody gonna have to help. We need some of that money now, man. We need, we need the money now, to man. We need the money now, man. Yeah, we out here. You see me? I'm chilling. You know. We just in there, we barbecue, it's barbecue in the back. Yeah, I'm drinking here. I ain't driving nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. We just chilling. Me and Drew Black. Matter of fact, what's up, nigga? I'm making a video, man. And they interrupted my motherfucking video. Huh? Who? Where you at? Over there. My man, my man, Joe Black. I got Joe Black in here. We chillin'. It's nice out. It's nice out. It's Memorial Weekend. We gotta remember the fallen soldiers. You see, she say born rich. I wasn't born rich. I was born broke when I'm rich now, goddamn. Hold up. A decisive action is about to be taken, one that will tip the scales. 
Stevie J's decision to partner with 50 Cent signals a bold strategy, one that is certain to have far-reaching consequences. Well, let me show you how I'm moving. Boom, you see that? I got the rose, I got a rose niggas. Cause niggas never understand, so you gotta do niggas like this. Yeah. Boom, and then you hit them with the rose. <laughs> Go straight out with the rose like that. And then when you get them with this rose right here, you gotta just, oh, you gotta take it up. You always gotta take it to the next level. So you, so you gotta, oh, oh, oh. Oh, there you go. Did you hit it with the rosé? That's how we doing. Rosé all day today, baby. Mm -hmm. Memorial weekend. We doing it big. What the fuck you doing? I'm cleaning the side. <laughs> what the fuck you doing, I'm nigga? Cleaning the side. Shit. I'm cleaning the side. Rich nigga, it's a rich nigga. Rich <laughs> nigga shit, huh? <laughs> always loves, always love. It's a moment. Yo, so check it out. Why a nigga came in the store and gave me this twenty dollars right here, right? Just say he said, here, take it. Twenty dollars. And said, I stole your CD in fifth grade. Right, right. Yeah. Yo, listen, my you cousin, the only person who knew about it was my cousin. But this bitch on some bullshit. So I know she gonna go left on me. I don't need you putting me all over your Instagram or anything. <laughs> <laughs> This shit is wild! This shit is wild! Yeah. <laughs> so, I know everybody been on this Instagram and all the social media stuff y'all been seeing, saying 50 saying I'm broke, I owe him money. And I never said that, stuff. Jack. First of all, let me get y'all to the real story with all that bullshit he talking about. Years ago, literally years ago, about four or five years ago, maybe six. It wasn't that long, Jack. We in the Palms Casino gambling. All right, 51 something. He leaves, yep. he come back, he give me a bag, say Jackie Holtis. I don't even think I even know if the motherfucker won. He no, you know I bag. won, Jack. I looked at his 50 bag. So I'm like, I ain't no looking at the nigga bag. It's his bag. He said, hold it. I hold the bag. We get back to the hotel. He tripping, talking about 3000 is missing. Where the money, Jack? $3,000 is missing. And you doing all this shit fine? <laughs> This right here is power right here, stars. Boom, right here, my birthday. This joint right here, this is Sony Cracker right here, this is the Oak right here. Boom. This right here is my Batmobile, the BMF Mobile. And this right here is my Isaac Wright Project, my Isaac Wright Project on ABC. And I heard they selling the Knicks, so this is my star at five. The veil is about to be lifted exposing realities that were long concealed. Stevie J and 50 Cent are on the verge of unveiling truths that will challenge everything you thought you knew. Because Cassie sued him, he settled 24 hours. Whoa! But now I heard she's cooperating with the feds. She's a civilian, what do you expect? Right, well, what's interesting, I actually looked this up, because I'm sure when they settled the lawsuit, she signed an NDA, saying she's not gonna write a book, she's not gonna do a documentary, whatever when else, The feds right? come, that's probably all out the window. Well, yeah, here's the thing, an NDA is a private agreement. Yeah, a criminal feds... case supersedes that. Yeah. So she could be compelled to take the stand, and she could basically throw that NDA out the window on the stand. Of mm. course, and she's a civilian, and it is what it is, and, and yo, yo, let me tell you something, God got, got, got his ways of humbling people. Yeah. You could be right here, and the next day they all laughing at you. We're public property. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned. When we, when I seen Fitz down there, yo, we public property. You can say whatever you want to say. So it's public property. You walking on the eggshells, my nigga. Whoever you are. Mm -hmm. And if you a black billionaire, come on. It's over. It's over. It's looking bad out here. For as Diddy. for it's niggas, bad. as for niggas taking up for Fifty, like Fifty, nah, Fifty been not fucking with Diddy for his reasons. Like, niggas be saying little funny shit behind the scenes, and, you know, G-Unit Spies is everywhere. What, what G-Unit Spies, that's when. G-Unit yeah. Spies is everywhere, bro. Uh, okay, because I remember huh? one of the funniest drink champs ever was huh? 50 was on there, and he said that he 
he met up with Diddy and Diddy offered to take him shopping. <laughs> yeah, you can't, like, you, can't, you can't tell a nigga from New That's York. Crazy. No, you can't tell a, a, a nigga from New York no shit like that. Yeah. Let's, let's be real. He's like, what, he's like, I'm a, like, I'm a bad yeah. bitch or something? I gonna even let me take me shopping? You gotta understand, <laughs> Fifth been like that since the beginning of the time. When he used to come to the block, he was the nigga like, oh shit, boo boo coming. Yeah. Like, oh man, this nigga, some shit is about to start. That's who he is. And as for niggas saying they want fades and all that, like, I don't know what niggas <laughs> think. <laughs> I, we been you talking jump- about Stevie J. No, no, Stevie no, J but like Stevie J, I don't, I don't like to talk about these dudes because like Benzino and them, I don't look at it as real street shit. Yeah. Like when you beef, like I said, with a- Entertainment, with, with man. Like it's a, all entertainment, a, man. With like a henchman or a fucking a, a world or any of these type Fat of niggas. Joe. Yeah, or Fat Joe, you know, mm-hmm. he's street. Yeah. But when you, with like a Benzino, like years ago, we ran down on Benzino Miami. We ran down on him, like, yo, don't put us in a source magazine. Cause he was so obsessed with Eminem success and G Unit was the shit at the time. And niggas was just, it always been a hate thing cause we signed with Eminem. Huh? Why? It's the nigga that put me on. I don't give a fuck what color he is. Hmm. That's just me. You understand what I'm saying? And like I said, nobody owed me nothing. I'm just the type of nigga that just be like, yo, you know what? I appreciate what niggas did. Niggas got me out the hood. Niggas got houses. We went to 103 places. We went on tour for 103 dates. The third, 50 has the Six third. Six months, nigga. Third biggest grossing tour in the world. Hip hop. Ever. Ever. I actually looked this up. I have this in my notes. It's about to be the second. All the numbers ain't even in yet. I think it's the second most gross. No, right. It I actually looked at the second. numbers. The, you guys made $123 million on that tour. Number two was Drake, it was all Blur tour, $189 million. Mm-hmm. And number one was Jay-Z and Beyonce on the run, $253 million. Okay. A lot of money though. Yeah, 50, 50 is a lot of is, money. 50 is a, a marketing genius. And yeah. you, we had fun on that road. We went to all kinds of places. We went to Paris. We went to Dubai. Bahrain, we went to shout to Abu Thailand, Dhabi. Shout to Bahrain, Thailand. Man, all over, Yo, and man. those experiences. Mumbai, India. And look, you gotta understand, me and 50 was always murder fans. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So murder is like when we on the road, it be me, murder, and our man Light. Shout out to Light. Light They call us the three amigos. So like a lot of shit happens on tour. Like as for production, you know, they gotta wake up five in the morning, build a stage. Like people be it's long doing these tours. And you ain't seen your kid, you ain't Definitely. seen your wife. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of shit happens on tour behind the scenes and it's understanding because while we're laying in our Armani hotel beds, somebody's building <laughs> the stage. <laughs> so we the type that when we around, it's the three amigos, we go, we find our bud in whatever country we at, London, Paris, you know, wherever we at, except for like so Abu Dhabi and all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We go wherever we at, we find our bud. We got our dressing room, we chilling the cut. Look, cause 50 tells us, yo, we only, I only need you. Look, we could be back in the hood or we could be having jobs. All I need is two hours of your time and we make six figures. <laughs> That's a fact. Two a hours dramatic e- shift is on the way. One that will upend the status quo. Stevie J's alliance with 50 Cent is leading to an outcome that few could have foreseen and it's going to leave a lasting impact. Google superstar actor, philanthropist 50 Cent gives his thoughts and reactions to P. Diddy. He also sells Netflix, his documentary, the Diddy documentary for millions of dollars and gives his reactions on that. Now, as we all know, 50 Cent has been spearheading the whole No Diddy campaign for a long, long time. He said ever since back in the day, Diddy made a pass on him, tried to take him shopping, tried to have him all in his business, take him out and stuff like that. And it was just a whole weird vibe. And ever since then, 50 Cent has been saying that P. Diddy has been suspect and he's been doing some funny duddy stuff. Well, since 2023, the end of 2023, things have been coming out about P. Diddy, and 2024, this past weekend in May, they dropped this video on P. Diddy where he is snuffing Cassie, he's kicking her, he's dragging her, and things are not looking good for Sean Puffy Combs. They gave him the key to the city in New York, they're talking about taking that away, and like I said, 50 Cent has this whole Diddy, no Diddy documentary that he has sold to Netflix for millions of dollars. Well, 50 Cent goes to his Instagram and gives this reaction. He says, he says, TMZ used this fat boy picture of me because their doc went to Tubi. LOL. It's okay, guys. We're all making good television. Mine just happens to be the best. Netflix wins the bidding war, but if the victims keep coming out, I'm going to need more episodes. 50 Cent also continues to say, okay, TMZ, put up a 2024 picture, baby. Let's work. 
Now, all of these are comments from 50 Cent on this whole Diddy situation. Everyone is going at Diddy's head, and then he gave this fake apology that nobody's really feeling. The only reason he apologizes is because he got caught. If that video never came out, remember, he was the same guy talking about attention, attention. I didn't do any of this. I'm innocent. All these folks are all making these allegations that everything is false, blah, 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 blah. Then, then to come out with your apology after the video services, nah, that was a fake ass apology. And Diddy, you need your ass whoop just like you did her. Nation, what do you think about 50 Cent's comments on selling his Diddy documentary to Netflix for millions of dollars? What do you think about this whole Diddy Cassie situation? Do you think P Diddy is gonna be able to recover? Nation, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Hey. O'Shea and I have been kicking it strong for a minute now. O'Shea doesn't drink, he doesn't. Something Long Buried is about to come to light, and it's going to change the game entirely. Stevie J and 50 Cent are preparing to reveal a secret that will send ripples through the industry. TV. Curtis, what's good, man? You and your feelings about Daphne? Is she with gang them? Or is it that you the rod. <laughs> How we go? I want you to fade. Fuck all that. Since it's entertainment, let me get the shit out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? <laughs> Woo! You got to fight every night to prove your love, don't you, Stevie J? Hey, y'all be sure to wipe your feet. You in the house of revolution. That's hitting the like button. Stevie J. Are you mad because you in court documents that Puffy like to show Leroy gay sex of you? Gay sex to turn Leroy on? Leroy admired you. He say, see, Stevie J, my boy toy too. You know, uh, Puffy Holmes was wide for sound and for video. You like to party. I mean, really party, didn't you, Stevie J? No one's believe you tough, Stevie J. I definitely don't believe you tough, brother. If you really was tough, you would have been fighting Puffy off of you all these years. He kept your career alive, brother. <laughs> you would have been through if you wasn't a boy toy long before Meek Mill. <laughs> now you want to get on here and run and rave about a fight with 50 Cent. Who the hell believes you want to fight 50? But what's disgusting to me is niggas like you Date rape was going on around Puffy. Women was getting shit put in their drink. So many people in Bad Boy done admitted they seen that. You never seen that? I mean, you never seen females getting their drink spiked? You never gave a damn about that, you fucking clown ass, popcorn ass nigga? Nigga beat you to sleep, wake you up, and whoop you again. You not tough? Taking steroids, you clown? Taking steroid shots in your ass, sucker? Hell you think you is, bitch, you gonna watch draws when you get to prison. Yes, you going, cause you was down with that nonsense puff hat going. You human laundromat, and you chef, you gonna cook a nigga food, nigga, you hear me? Bitch ass nigga, they, they, they love all of that hanky panky you like. They love it in there, you fucking Greek freak. But, when I seen you running the raven on here, I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. Boy, you really in love with PD, ain't you? I mean, you wanna take on 50 to fight for your man. This is disgusting. You got daughters, don't you? Puffy done you like Meek, letting everybody know he was having sex with you. Any producer want to be you? Yeah, I want to do you like Stevie J. Are you mad at Puffy? No, you not. Oh, you mad at 50? Oh, you say, oh, he mad. We, we, you, oh, your baby mama was with the game. No, I don't see no court documents saying you was with no women, bro. Men! <laughs> now you want to get on there and act like you some player. Boy, they say you was used as bait to get other men, <laughs> Stevie J. <laughs> oh, I don't think so, Mr. Rainbow Push Coalition. Who the hell you think you fooling? <laughs> and don't you ever in your life try to play with cuff figure the wrong way, you hear me? We know about goddamn big swole punks like you. You a prison punk, nigga. Soon to be. The revelations are out, and the consequences are starting to unfold. Stevie J and 50 Cent's Expose is already having an impact, and the repercussions are going to be felt far and wide. This story is far from over. I cannot say where they are in the world. What I can say is, when they got into the boat, they were roughed. 
Mm. Wow. Want to know how they ended up on Epstein Island? Please. They auditioned to be models for music videos. Oh, cast the couch. When they got to Miami, they had to show and turn over their ID and they collected their passports and then they drugged them. And then the next thing you know, they were in a storage container getting fucked by a bunch of weird strangers on camera who were bidding for all of the terrible things that were happening to them live online. Wow. After they made it through that, that's when they were sent to Rick Ross's music videos, shoots, um, as groupies and extras to make sure that they could walk around in society without looking like victims. And then after that, that's when they were shipped off to Epstein Island to be broken in and to be readied for um, Dubai and Moscow. When they got into the boat and I looked at them, they didn't have to tell me shit. And neither one of them, none of them, they, they didn't speak for weeks. But when you spend time with strangers and they finally feel safe enough to go to sleep and then they start talking in their sleep and you hear the shit that they yell. Yeah, no, it's crazy because as you sit here and we talk about hostile and or, you These know. three girls that I'm telling you about were in videos that are being played on online today. And they appeared in those videos after they had already been sodomized, systematically beaten, starved. But they were smiling in those videos, though. So. 